Hello, everybody. Uh, today is uh, Thursday. It is uh, episode 101. Believe it or not, 101, Avoid Working with Grinch is going to be today's topic. Thursday, to, uh, December 24th, Christmas Eve. My gosh, what a great day. What a great day. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. Um, that being said, uh, we are going to be talking about... Uh, Avoid working with the Grinches. If you will, please share our episodes, our social media platforms with our fellow network marketers all across the globe. As you know, we go live each and every day at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can get uh, them to these platforms, hashtag DMLM Solution, hashtag DMLM Solution. Sorry, I'm a little bit uh, disoriented here a little bit. I'm trying to do, I'm watching the uh, dashboard here. There's some things going on. I apologize for that. But anyway, please join us today as we talk about a great subject, working, avoid working with the networking uh, Grinches. You don't want to miss that. They can cause a real havoc into your business. See you in a few moments. Welcome to the MLM Solution Podcast Show, where you'll learn the facts and hear the truth about the network marketing industry. Here's your host, Rob Cootie. Hello, Miss Marie. How are you today? Good morning, Rob. Happy Christmas Eve. Tomorrow it is. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, today's been a lazy day for me. I have not gotten out of my clothes from yesterday. That's the reason why you guys see that with my broken arm and my back, it has been a challenge. I'm going to get brave and take a shower here in a little bit, <laughs> but I've wanted, I've wanted to wait until I got this done. I need a shave. I mean, I'm really, uh, it, this, this year health wise has been a real challenge and uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm done with the pain. I'm tired of being in pain all the time. And, um, uh, I told the wife the other day, I, you know, as you know, Miss Marie, I've been taking Oxycontin. I got like 40 pills and, uh, and I've taken them all, but I've taken them over a 65 day period. I, I don't get it. Uh, they didn't make me high. They kind of dulled the pain. They really didn't make the pain go away. Uh, and I told the wife, I said, I don't get it. I even told the doctor, I don't get it. You know, but I, I know everybody's different. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying I don't get it. But I will say, I can understand. I told the wife, I can understand how people get addicted to not being in pain. If that pill will get rid of that pain, it's like, give me that freaking pill. Because <laughs> sure. the pain wears on you every freaking day. <laughs> yep. 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 So it's a mess. It's a mess. Anyway, that's the reason why I have not changed shirts, guys, because it's really painful with this broken arm, which I'm going to the doctor because the swelling is still being an issue. Not as bad as it was, but I should not be this swollen this late in the game. And well, I'm uh, not so fashion conscious that I would have even noticed had you not said anything. <laughs> now you went and gave it away. Now I know. <laughs> I am fashion conscious. Matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a lot of shaving. There's going to be a new look next year. I always change. I get tired of the same old thing. You see me. I'll say you'll you'll look at me one day. Oh my gosh, he's done it again. You know, I'll change glasses. I'll change. I I hate. I'll even cut my hair different, you know, just because I hate looking the same all the time. It's like, okay, I need time to change it up. <laughs> well, I'm so, pretty consistent, and that way people think I don't age or something is, oh, okay. is basically <laughs> what I've heard. Because, you know, I'll still have people, oh, you look the same as you did in high school, which I don't think is true, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same here. Yeah, I'll take any compliment at this time in my life. <laughs> so I have to tell you, it's it's been a fun week because it's Christmas week, right? And yes, I, yes. I don't, know, I don't know how you are with like the Christmas music and Christmas specials um, and those types of things, but 
I love the Christmas music. I mean, you'll catch me singing Jingle Bells in July. <laughs> yes, yes. Just, yes. just something I do. But I look forward to the Christmas specials that come out. You know, the classics like Frosty yes. the Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And then there's there's the Dr. Seuss classic, right? Yes, the Grinch yes. who stole Christmas. Yes. And how many well, times girl. is that? How many times has that been redone? But I like the classic cartoon one. That's yeah, me too. my absolute favorite. Uh, yes. Um, I have them all on DVD. Uh, I, I love Home Alone. I love uh, uh, White Christmas. I love uh, Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, I could go on and on. You and I are cut from the same cloth. I'll be in during the summer months, I'll be in the office working. And I'll have my radio on Christmas music. <laughs> the wife's like, what in the hell are you doing? Turn that shit off. I'll put my <laughs> headphones on, you know, because uh, you're right. I love the Christmas holidays. I love the Christmas spirit. I love what the shows. I love to laugh. I love being with my grandkids and laughing with them. Uh, I love eggnog. Uh, I, I'm really cautious about it. You can put so much weight on that, that stuff. <laughs> but the point is, is, yes, I enjoy the holidays, every ounce of it, just like you do. And uh, there's not anything I don't like. That's the reason why we have six trees <laughs> and the house is decorated. I'll have to take you guys on a tour before the, she takes it all down and show everybody what uh, she has done. It's quite a, an impressive thing. And uh, so anyway, but she's not over the top. It's done very tastefully. You know, every little section has a little bit of Christmas, not a lot of Christmas. Awesome. Where, yeah, where you feel like it's closing in on you and in your face. It's very, very nice touch. So yeah. I'm glad to hear that you're like that. That's awesome. Yep. So, you know, Dr. Seuss had the Grinch who stole Christmas. And yeah. today we're talking about the potential <laughs> Grinches that can steal the joy out of your network marketing <laughs> business if you're not careful. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Because this business is hard enough as it is without having to deal with a Grinch who will not only uh, steal your, your enthusiasm, but will suck you dry when it comes to your emotional uh, uh, reservoir, okay? Because you got to realize, guys, that this this business is all about staying power. It's about you know the words commitment, persistence, dedication. All of those words are going to mean one thing: staying power. I mean, that's the bottom line. You got to stick around long enough to reach those milestones that you put down on paper. You can do it. There's no if, ands, or buts. If you can do the five simple things that we talk about, if you're willing to master those five simple things, there's nothing stopping you outside of yourself. Now, I really don't like cliches. I really don't like saying that. It is a truism. But the, the, the other side of the coin is the company has to work with you. Remember, we always tell you, you have to work in synergy with the company. The only way you create wealth with a new company is that you ride the coattails of the growth of the company by being a part of that growth meaning that you're bringing volume to that company's exponential growth. It's one and the same, okay? Uh, there has to be a lot of synergy, uh, a lot of dynamic things that have to come together. But if you check the company out and it's got the five simple, I mean, the five things a company must have, and you've done your homework and you jump on it and it doesn't work out, you can go uh, home uh, not with your tail tucked between your legs, but with your held, head held high because you checked the company out. You gave it your best shot. It didn't work out. That's okay. Go to another company. But what she's talking about where the Grinches can suck all of that uh, emotional energy that you need for yourself and your business, man, if you're dealing with somebody who's got a pissy ass attitude and mean and nasty, not very easy to work with, that will suck the positive energy that you need and have for your own business right out of you, <laughs> whether that's upline or downline. Right, Ms. Marie? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And you can encounter those people as you're sharing that music to the ears message. Oh, yeah. You can encounter those people once they're already in your business. Yep. You can run into them at all stages. That's right. Yep. And you know what, guys? We talked about it before. Look, you got to have balls of steel. You got to have a spine, stainless steel spine, and you got to stand up for yourself, your future, and your and your family, and your business. Even when you run into these people, uh, I do get them. Miss Marie, as you and I talk many times, and people that follow us know this. Uh, I have a two strike rule. You know that I will give the person the benefit of the doubt uh, if there is a grinchy moment. <laughs> uh, the the first time we meet, I will discuss that with them in a very professional adult manner 
in a positive way and say, I'm not really sure I understand what you're getting at here. Let me make sure I'm on the same page as you. I'll repeat what I think I see, what I'm seeing or what I heard. And if they verify, in fact, that that is what they meant, then we got a problem. <laughs> okay. Or they have a problem. I don't because my ass is gone. Okay. But the bottom line is uh, I'm not going to put up with Grinches. I can say that now, guys, because at one time uh, I did put up with Grinches. And I learned the hard way what they can do to you and your business. And it is not fun. They take up a lot of your energy. They take up a lot of your focus. They're a source of stress. You got enough of that stuff going on in your life as it is. You certainly don't want to compound it or add to it by dealing with a Grinch. And we're not using the word Grinch because it's a holiday season. Although it's a cool play on words, but it's a perfect example and a great metaphor, whatever you want to term you want to, of what this person is like, right, Miss Marie? Right. And I think, you know, I, I like Grinch because, I don't know, I'm a bigger fan of cartoons than anything <laughs> else, but we, we probably could have gone gone with the Scrooge term as well, right? Because that's, yeah. that's a yeah, little you're right. <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Either one of those would work. It's just that um, most Grinches have a real pissy attitude. And the thing about the Grinch, they went out of your out of their way. If you watch the Grinch, he was always poking, you remember, at the people in the village, right? He was always doing whatever he could to, to piss them off, right? Well, Scrooge was kind of quiet to himself. He was definitely Scroogey. He was definitely had the same mentality as the Grinch. They'd have been perfect partners. But the thing is, uh, Scrooge didn't necessarily go and poke at you. He just kind of kept to himself and really didn't care about humankind at all. Okay. <laughs> and a Scrooge is a little bit different in the network marketing uh, field because you'll basically have those people. They do have a negative attitude. They'll repel people because of their negative attitude, even though they don't have a lot to say. And to be honest with you, you don't want to waste a lot of your time with people like that because they have so far to go to even be cordial in life <laughs> that you don't have time and energy to wait for them to turn that corner. A Grinch, on the other hand, is somebody that you, can be extra, an extrovert, can be a talker, uh, can be a the, the life of the party, but boy, they can have a serious pissy attitude, and that will rub off on people and push people away just like Scrooge, just in a different manner. And if you have to deal with that person, whether they're your upline leadership and they're trying to be on your butt all the time about this and that, and you tell them, hey, you're not my boss. And, you know, they're just constantly giving you a hard time, constantly poking at you. Or if it's your downline down there doing all kinds of stuff, like we talked about rogue downline, rogue leaders. If you go back and listen to that episode, you'll learn a lot about <laughs> somebody that goes rogue in your business and the challenges that come with that. But when you had a pissy attitude on top of somebody who's going rogue, Miss Marie, Ooh, that is an ugly situation. <laughs> well, exactly. And and if you're encountering a Grinch <laughs> during the recruiting phrase, phrase phase, <laughs> I'm a little bit of trouble talking. I'm glad to I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> you're starting it's to rub off. Long week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if you if you're encountering a Grinch during the recruiting phase, especially if it's the early portion of your business and you're just you're at the point where you're just excited about getting people signed up into your organization, starting to build your business, but you've encountered a Grinch, I think there's a higher likelihood that we have a tendency to think, oh, it'll work out fine. Let's, you know, we'll sign him or her up. It'll it'll all work out. But once somebody has shown you their true colors, the odds of them changing are slim to none. And Slim just rode out of town on the last <laughs> one, right? So, you know, the the advice is as exciting as it is to get somebody into your business. And this could be somebody that that is successful, that you know has a wide network, could be really good in the network op, uh, network marketing opportunity that you're presenting, but there's that personality conflict or they're just negative and you can tell it's just, it's going to great and it's not going to be a really good working relationship. Avoid even signing them up because yeah. you're gonna hang your hat on the fact that, oh, it'll work out in the long run or they can change or I can adapt. You're just going to find yourself button heads down the road and regretting it. So just save yourself the pain and suffering up front <laughs> and just don't even let them show up. And it's not like you have to be negative or confrontational about it. 
you know, oftentimes it's just, you leave the ball in their court. Most people are busy. They forget about things because quite honestly, adding a network marketing business into their life is going to be a sacrifice in terms of time and effort that they're going to have to spend. It's probably something that they didn't seek out that you presented them the opportunity. You leave the ball in their court as far as your follow-up goes and nine times out of 10, that follow-up will never happen and they'll just fall by the wayside and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, that exactly. One time, that one time out of 10, if they do call you and follow up and say, hey, I really want to get involved, you're like, mm, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's when you know you have matured in the business when you are able to say, no, I'm not signing that person up, where you're not so desperate that you feel I've got to sign somebody up, regardless of whether they're a Grinch or not, I'll deal with them once they get in my business. That's a, cho a choice you have to make. <clears throat> I'm not going to say uh, it's right or wrong per se. I wouldn't do it. She wouldn't do it. We encourage you not to do it, but it's your business. You do what you want. I will say more times than not, you will regret doing it. And uh, yeah, you got the volume there uh, in the beginning, but boy, it can sure come back and bite you. Um, I don't really know the right answer other than what you just said. Avoid them if you can, uh, because look, chances are that, if you're on the verge of signing somebody like this up, you've gotten the music to the ears message down. You've gotten the recruiting process down. And it's just a matter of time before you find somebody that's not a Grinch, that's equally as good, maybe even better. So the thing is, is that uh, you want to work with like-minded people. You want to work with people that have the same kind of demeanor that you do, because there's so much positive energy that comes out of that as you develop your group. If you have a few Grinches in there and you find yourself bending over backwards to appease these Grinches, uh, you're going to find out that this business building process can be a real challenge. And uh, you want to have as much fun as possible, uh, not only for yourself, but for your downline. Because as she said, and as we say all the time, everything in this business is duplicatable. If you're stressed out all the time because you're just sponsoring people left and right, uh, no matter who they are, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, you're going to have internal stress that's going to weigh on you day and night, and your demeanor is going to change, and your downline is going to pick up on that, and uh, that could be a bad, bad thing. You want to have as much fun as you can. You want to have as much positive going on in your business as possible. When you sponsor like-minded people that are willing to work as hard as you are and you share certain common things, common goals, you'll be amazed at the positive outlook that you'll have and the fun that you'll have building this business. Yeah. And, and I was going to say, I believe me, I have done this multiple times <laughs> myself and, and it's Who always early it? on, right? It's like, you've got your 90 day goals written out and you want to hit those goals. So you want to get those signups and it's like, oh, it'll be fine. And then, oh man, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. Kick it's, my not like you can, it's not like you can fire them. You can avoid them. And, exactly. And, uh, but, you know, here's what sometimes happens, guys. You can cut them out. You can say, okay, I'm not going to work with Marie, Marie anymore. She's a pain in the butt. I've talked to her. I've tried to work with her. I've been up front with her. You know what? It's just her personality. Uh, she's just a real high maintenance person. And I just don't have the energy or focus to work with them. She's just going to have to make it on her own. You can do that. It's your right, your prerogative. You owe her nothing. Don't ever let anybody tell you you're my sponsor. It's your responsibility to work with me until I'm successful. That's bull crap. There is no bylaw. There's no guideline. There's no standard uh, in the closet, outside the closet, anything under the table that says you have to, you that you are responsible for their success and you have to work with them. That's total bull crap. Don't believe that. Don't listen to it. And don't let them play that mind game with you. It's another example of being a Grinch. But here's the thing. If they stick around and uh, you have a regional event and you're the speaker on stage, they show up. <clears throat> it can be a real awkward moment, you know, especially if they have a downline and especially if they're kind of confrontational, especially if they want to show their ass in this environment. I mean, there's a lot of, I, you know, we've unfortunately it, it, you know, we're human. These things happen. It's not like we're talking about things that haven't happened because you're dealing with human beings and there's conflicts. There's personality conflicts. 
And uh, there are certain people that will do things to quote unquote show you up. And uh, that can be a very aggravating. The point is, if you sponsor them, you can still cut them out, not work with them. That doesn't mean that they won't be successful. It doesn't mean that they won't build a 200 person business and bring a large uh, contingent to a local or regional event, maybe in a corporate event. And now you're all in this same room together. And this person may be the type of person where revenge is a, uh, a nice slice of pie. Okay. So you have to realize that if you sponsor them, like she said, you got to be willing to live with the consequences that may come with that, even if you choose not to work with them. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, obviously the easiest thing to do is to avoid it on the front end. Don't even bring them into <laughs> your right. business to begin with. Do what she says. But, <laughs> but what happens if during that initial, you know, interview, follow up, all that stuff, <laughs> there, there's no indication that there really a, is a, they are a Grinch or there's a personality conflict or anything that doesn't come through until once they're in your organization oh, yeah. and started working together. Then yeah. you have to figure out how to deal with it, right? Well, so, there again, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, as as Rob said, depending on what you need to do, you can kind of cut them out of your business, but it doesn't have to be necessarily in a confrontational way no. that's going to create animosity either. You no. can simply come to the conclusion. I mean, if you're feeling like there's a personality conflict with somebody in your organization, they're probably feeling it as well. There's sure. probably a level of discomfort there. So there can be the conversation, you know, first of all, is there a way to work through this? Can we find a way to work together and manage this without it turning into a big thing? Or do we just need to kind of part company, go our separate ways? You do your thing over there, I'll do my thing over here. It just happens to be that in the organizational uh, structure of this particular network marketing company, your organization's under mine. Big deal. Yep. You know, you or, know, or vice versa. I mean, you could be in somebody's organization. You come into an organization and you find out your upline mentor, you have a personality conflict with them. It oh, can yeah. go the other way too, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I've done, I've been on both sides of the fence. And when they're upline, I've chosen not to work with them. And I didn't call them. I didn't bother them. Uh, I don't have that kind of personality. You know, I'm going to go do my own thing. But on the other side of the spectrum, uh, when I had people like that, as I said earlier, and I just want to make sure that people understand this, not because I want to come out as a knight in shining armor, but because I want to make sure you understand uh, what I did <clears throat> in handling troubled people like that, a Grinch. I would be, you know, I feel like we're all adults. I know, I understand that communication is absolutely critical, and I believe in addressing things up front, but I can, I can do it in a professional and very nice manner. And what I would do, Miss Marie, is I would say, hey, look, I just want to touch base with you because, you know what, when you do positive things together, you can accomplish great things in this business model. And I feel like you got a lot of talent. I feel like you have real potential. But I, I understand that there's some friction between us. I can feel it. I don't know if you can. Do you feel it? You know, uh, yes, I do. Or whatever. OK. And I'd say, OK, well, look, you know what? We're adults. We should be able to work through this. Uh, is there anything? Is it something do you not want to work together? Is it a personality thing? I would never say, is it something I said? Okay, because I'm giving them an out. I'm giving them an excuse. So what I would say is, you know, <clears throat> is it something we can work through? Is it something that, uh, um, you know, that, that you feel comfortable uh, working together with? And, and I would never allow, I would never point the finger at them, but I wouldn't allow them to point it at me with my words. And so I would just be very gentle about it. And once again, reiterate what great things we could accomplish together if we can get over this. And I would say to them, you know, do you have anything you want to say? Is there anything you want to address? And then if they had a problem with me and my personality, I wanted them to say it. I didn't want to lead them into that excuse because sometimes if you lead people, some people think, oh, you know what? If I lead and I start out with it, it makes them feel comfortable and they'll, and they'll come riding along. No, what you're doing is, they're thinking in their mind, well, I really don't want to tell him, oh, he gave me an excuse. Yeah, Rob, that's it right there. So you're not really accomplishing anything. What you did is you covered over with icing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is leave it open for them to tell me what they really feel. 
I'm not going to give them an out. <clears throat> okay. So that's what I would do, Miss Marie. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it didn't. You know, some people say, hey, I just don't like your personality. I don't like working with you. I don't want to work with you. Okay, cool. You know what? Just like when I told you when I asked a girl for a date, no, you're just not my type. I'd say, hey, that's cool. That saved me a lot of pain in the butt. It saved me a lot of money too. But <laughs> the point is, is that the situation was it was good for both of us, right? Because the female was was honest about how she felt. That's cool. Not everybody's going to like Rob and vice versa. Well, that's if you don't ask the questions and if you're not willing to hear the answer, guess what? You're going to have problems. I didn't care that people didn't like me. I understand that life works that way. You know, you're not going to get along with everybody. And that was okay. At least they were honest enough to say it. And I respected that. And I told them, I said, well, thank you for telling me because I really appreciate that this is the best way to go about it. There are personality conflicts. I'm glad that you felt comfortable telling me that. And like you said, I'd say, okay, you know what? You go do your thing. I'll go do mine. And now that we have this out of the way, that way we can do things positive in a positive manner individually and not together. And that's how I handled it. And, and here's the beautiful thing about this business model, right? Is this is your business. You have control of the situation. You can decide who you work with and when you work with them and whether you work with them. I mean, when you're in a job, you're taking a position and people can come and go in terms of your coworkers, your managers, your supervisors. You don't always have control over that. You have somebody come into one of those positions that's making your life an absolute living hell. And your only yeah. options are to either deal with it and find a way to deal with that stress and discomfort of that job situation or go find a job somewhere else. There because you're not in charge of the hiring and firing of your supervisors, your managers, probably not your co-workers unless you're in a supervisor status. But even at that, if you think about it in the corporate environment anymore, if you have someone under you, an employee who you have a conflict with, if it's a personal conflict, you may have to find a way to deal with that because if professionally they're delivering and you don't have documented reasons that you can fire them, you can't get rid of them. Even though you're in a position to fire them, you may still not be able to do that. But here with this network marketing business model, you get, con you get to control that environment. You get to decide how much stress and discomfort you want to put up with in your business. So mm -hmm. if you have that Grinch in your organization that you're working with, would you rather have the stress and discomfort of that one conversation to kind of clear the air and figure out which way it's going to go or just continually have that stress available to you? Right. What's well, the beauty of it? You can have that conversation. It's a one and done. It's in your control and it's over. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's, it's <clears throat> one of the things I absolutely love about this industry. You know, people always talk about wanting to be their own boss. And this is one of those catch points where it's a discomfort, a not fun part of being your own boss is having those conversations and dealing with those situations. But at least you have the ability and the control of the situation. Yep. Well said. Well put. Great points. <clears throat> I agree. I agree. And so the bottom line is, guys, is that you don't have to put up with the Grinch and understand the PETA people that we talk about, and I want to make sure that these things are clear because I know we talk, we have a lot of episodes that kind of almost relate to each other. And you might think, well, that's a carbon copy. They're just saying it in a different way. No, PETA people are pain in the ass people. They do things, not just say things, not with just have a pissy attitude, but they do things. They do things, they go rogue. They do things they're not supposed to. Uh, they're putting you and your business in a potentially legal issue uh, situation. Uh, where you could lose your distributorship. I mean, there's so many things, and we talked about that. Uh, and there, there are people that constantly question everything you do. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? How come you're not helping me? I called you 22 times, and you didn't answer. How come this ingredient was changed? How come they didn't keep it? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, they're just constant. They're pain in the ass people. They suck up 80% of your time, okay? <clears throat> and the bottom line is, is that the Grinch just has a pissy attitude. They may be a great worker. They may be building a great business, but they're just a nasty, mean person. <clears throat> that that just permeates nastiness and almost repels people. And you just think, how in the world does a person like that attract people to them? How does a person like that build a business? Okay. 
Uh, I've seen it happen. Uh, I've seen people learn from their mistakes. Uh, they did listen to their mentors and actually uh, their attitude changed and was dialed down quite a bit. And actually, Miss Marie, they were high level uh, athletes that typically had this attitude, believe it or not, you know, because they had the extreme type A personality that went after things. They, uh, you know, kept themselves in tip top shape. Uh, they felt they were invincible and, uh, you know, they were kind of full of themselves. And they, uh, once their athletic career was over, whether it was college or whatever, professional, semi-pro, whatever, uh, you know, they were humbled a little bit, but they still had a, uh, that edge to them. And as they went along, they learned to reduce that. Edge. So I've seen it work, um, but I don't want to put in the effort. That is too much work. I've been there. I've done that. It is not fun. <laughs> and I don't want to do it. <clears throat> because once again, the time and energy that you spend on that, on that situation and that person wears you out to where you may not have enough energy and focus to deal with the people that have the positive attitude in your business. They call and say, Rob, do you have time? And you're, you're so wore out. You're thinking, oh, gosh, I really don't want to do this. I'm wore out. You know, I'm frustrated. My mind's full of all the crap I just went through with this other person. And, and what I'm saying, guys, and what I'm giving you an example of is how that can interfere with your mindset, your positivity, your downline can pick up on that. You know, and they may hang up the phone and say, well, you know what? Rob wasn't all there. I'm not sure he really listened. I'm not really sure I got all of him. I wonder if there's something going on in his personal life. And he may actually tell some of the other down live. Well, I talked to Rob the other day and I don't know. There's just something wrong going on there. There's something. I wonder if he's having trouble. <clears throat> you don't need that in your business. You need to have as much positive going in your business. You'll be amazed at the positive impact, the huge impact, that positivity that your business has can have on your success and your long-term stability. So it's imperative. Uh, you know, we, we try not to hammer these points too much, but it's imperative that you understand the importance of the things we're bringing up and we're not overemphasizing it. Anybody, Miss Marie, that has been in a regular workforce and had a Grinch in their uh, workforce that just caused chaos and cancer. I mean, if you not had a, a cancerous person in your work environment that when you got rid of them, it was night and day difference. Absolutely. Guys, yeah, yeah. That's what we're talking about. That's exactly what we're talking about. Okay. And Miss Marie's right. She said from the get go, cut it off in the prospecting process, have the guts to stand up to yourself and look in the mirror and say, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not sponsoring. I don't care how desperate I am. I'm not sponsoring this person. Even if they go on to be success in the company in a different way <clears throat> or different business, you know what? You just have to chalk it up because the bottom line is, uh, you don't know the negative impact they're having on that business, okay? And how long that business may last. So <clears throat> don't be jealous and don't be regretful. You want to bypass this person to get to a Miss Marie, okay? And I'll take a Miss Marie every day of the week over a successful pain in the ass or a Grinch. So Miss Marie, I think we've covered it all. What do you think? I think so. I'm I'm ready to go start some Christmas Eve festivities. How about you? <laughs> I am too. I'm ready to get off my feet. They're killing me. <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling, guys, but I promise you, there's a lot of pain going on here. All right, tomorrow's subject is a Freelance Friday. As you know, and it's Christmas Day. Tomorrow is going to be episode number 33. We're actually doing it uh, in symbolism only. I doubt if we're going to be talking about uh, any real content we will talk a little bit. We're going to try and keep it 10 to 15 minutes at max because guess what? It's Christmas Day. It's our gift but to you guys, our gift to ourselves. Yes. I was going to say, we, we might have a little Christmas gift for you. Just saying. Well, you never know. I was going to say that as we close. Don't miss it because we might have something very special for you guys. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little hint there. All right, guys, if you will, please like and comment uh, our show and go to our various social media platforms. Give us the thumbs up. Follow us. Share us with the rest of the world. Let's help our fellow network marketers across the globe to be successful, too. We can do that by sharing this content with them. Also, give us a thumbs up if you like what you hear. If you see where it can help you, that gives us feedback, believe it or not. Also, leave comments. I know you guys do that as well. We appreciate all of that. Continue to do that for us, please. It gives us a lot of confidence that we're reaching the right people with the right information. And that means a lot to us when we do that. 
And as always, we tell you guys about the wonderful gifts, the free gifts that we give you guys on our main page, right? Uh, it's the three gifts that we talk about all the time, which is the uh, four critical mistakes and the five simple steps to success and the zero to networking hero. Uh, those that combination cannot be found anyplace else. It is it will have a profound effect on your business. I dare you to download it, read it, and not and use it and find that it does not have a positive and major impact on your business. These things are the basics. They will have an impact. Not because I say so, but because they're the basics. <clears throat> They've had success from day one at all levels of network marketing. So do yourself a favor. They're free, 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 free. As you can see, F-R-E-E, -E, they're free gifts on our main page, the MLMSolution.net. <clears throat> Download them. One video, one audio, and one ebook. Easy, simple, straightforward reading. You'll be amazed. You can read those ebooks in a matter of minutes, literally. And finally, our Black Friday special until the end of the year, just like all the other retailers, we are having a Black Friday sale until the end of the year. We've extended it and rightfully so. This is a wonderful business building package. That's what it is, a business building package. The only thing it lacks is the advanced materials in phase three and four <clears throat> of the business building process, okay? Other than that, it has everything you need to take that material, read it, watch the videos, listen to the audios, and guys, there's not one thing that is wanting in that package. You can use that information immediately to make your business go to the level that you want it to. All that's left is to apply the knowledge and the work ethic, and you are on your way. Do not miss out. Normally, $299.95, because it has a plethora of material. As a matter of fact, I think it may be too much material, but you make that determination. The bottom line is, is that for uh, the holidays, we reduced it to $99.95. <clears throat> and then when Black Friday came around, we reduced it again, to $49.95, which Miss Marie says is 83% off the original price, which does not make her happy. It is a limited offer. When you get on the page, it is a limited offer. Remember that. Do not miss out on this limited offer, guys. You're going to regret it if you do. $49.95. What a great deal. All right, Miss Marie, I think we're done. I think we're ready to call it a day. <clears throat> um, another great episode. Thank you so much for your time. You guys will see you tomorrow, 11 a.m., Freelance Friday, Freelance Friday. Merry Christmas to everybody. And also, we want to say we hope you have a safe and wonderful Christmas Eve. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the MLM Solution Podcast. For more info, visit our website, themlmsolution.net. Please follow us on the following platforms, Facebook, YouTube, etc. And share this podcast with our fellow network marketers around the world by hitting the share button on our various platforms.